Hi guys, this week we're gonna talk a little bit about public speaking or presentational speaking. So I know this is not a public speaking class, but even in COM 110, we're going to go over the basics of presentational speaking. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about delivery and what that should look and sound like. And then we'll talk a little bit about the actual assignment itself and how to start to put that together. A later video we'll talk about outlines where we go through and really kind of put our pen to paper and come up with the building blocks for the speech. So you will have plenty of time to kind of learn about some of that. But we're just gonna go over some of the basics of public speaking this video. So the first thing is thinking about why is delivery important? And delivery is so important because it contributes to speaker ethos. So if you've ever heard the Aristotle ethos pathos locos, ethos really deals with credibility. So our delivery affects our credibility with our audience. Our audience really looks to that delivery to kind of engage with the topic, engage with the speaker. If you are confident and excited or passionate about what you're talking about, your audience will likely feel the same. This is why we really want to focus on that delivery for this assignment. It just also contributes to the overall presentation. All of you have probably sat through a class presentation or even an instructor where the delivery might not have been quite as engaging, right? And it might have been wonderful content, but if you weren't engaged by the presentation of that, of that content, then you might have just kind of tuned out or maybe you didn't connect with what was being said as well as you could have. So delivery certainly impacts our response to what we're learning. Okay, so some of the different categories of delivery we're gonna look at, we're sort of gonna divide it into two different sections. So one is gonna be vocal delivery or the use of your voice, and one is going to be body movement. So things like hand gestures, um, body posture, eye contact, all of that. So we think about vocal delivery, we're gonna look at a few things. So the volume of your voice is number one. Pitch, rate, tone, pronunciation, and this beautiful thing called a pause. Probably one of the hardest but most um, impactful techniques of public speaking is the use of a well-timed pause. So let's look at some of those. And the first one we think about is volume. And we want to sort of do a nice thing when we're doing these recordings where we're speaking loud enough that we can be heard, but we're not yelling, right? We want to make sure that our voice is still rich, it's full, um, we're not overstraining our voice. So if you, any of you sing, you know that you will sing and from your diaphragm. Same place that you should be speaking, right? So your ab muscles should really hurt as you are kind of presenting your speech. That makes your voice much more rich, it fills the space, so I'd rather you project versus get louder. Projecting, again, is really pushing that sound out through that diaphragm and filling the room, okay? So think about that when you're thinking about volume. It also tends to lower your voice. So for those of us who might go up a little bit when we get nervous, that lower voice is associated with credibility, so it helps us kind of lower that voice and, again, have a nice, rich voice. Um, we won't look at it this semester, but there's a great TED talk and he talks about how your voice should sound like warm, hot chocolate. So kind of have that mental image. Also wanna pay attention to nonverbal feedback. Won't be as much of an issue in your recordings, but anytime you present, if you have ever done theater, you'll know if the audience is doing a lot of rustling or coughing, that means they can't hear you. It's little tells to sort of let you know, okay, I need to kind of get them back into that full immersive experience and probably increase my volume a little bit. So those are some of the things related to volume. That's gonna be easy for you guys to look at because you're gonna do some test recording to make sure that your volume is where it needs to be. When we think about pitch and tone, most of the time people think about trying to avoid a monotone voice and that's certainly something that we wanna do. So you wanna vary that pitch for emphasis. You should have highs and lows and make sure you're going up and down as you speak. A common issue that we have today is we tend to go up at the end of sentences. So everything ends as if it's a question. So how are you doing today is a question. You go up there. But I left the flowers on the table is not a question, right? We would wanna go down at the end of that sentence. So really think about making sure that you're dropping your pitch a little bit at the end of sentences unless they're a question. It's just something that we do quite a lot these days. 
To avoid monotone, all you have to do is have those highs and lows. Again, if you choose a topic that you're super passionate about, that will naturally come through. The more passionate you are about your topic, the more engaged your audience is gonna be. So you wanna have this beautiful conversational tone. We wanna be professional, we don't wanna to get too casual, but it should feel like a conversation between you and the audience, much like these videos feel for me. We're kind of talking to each other, you're listening on the other end, but it is still that beautiful conversation. And we'll look at lots of samples this week and in the following weeks to kind of see what we're looking for here. All right, so this is a very telling statistic, but 85% of your audience's judgment of you as a speaker relates to body movement. So they will look at you and sort of, again, take that physical view and that helps them inform if they feel like you're confident and they're going to believe what you're saying or not. So when we're speaking, we really wanna think about being sort of as tall as we possibly can be. So standing straight on both feet is one of the most common issues I see in these recordings. So you wanna make sure that you have equal weight on both of your legs. We have a tendency to do this and kind of slump to one side or the other because that feels more natural. So really try to stand on both feet. You're welcome to move. I think some of us get out some of our energy that way and it can be very effective, right? So we don't wanna move constantly from side to side because that's distracting, but you can stop, talk for a little bit, and then maybe move to this side, stop, talk for a little bit, okay? So it's just that little bit of movement that helps get out some of that energy. The other thing you wanna think about is pulling your shoulders back. Again, this idea we wanna be as tall as we possibly can be. So pull those shoulders back, that will help you also speak from your diaphragm and make sure your voice is nice and rich there. Because if you're slumped over here, your voice is going down, right? So we wanna be nice and tall. And then your use of hand gestures. I'm always gonna be a person, I overuse my hands, that's just part of my speaking style. So you'll kind of figure out what your speaking style is but at least you wanna to try to incorporate them a little bit. Try to avoid clasping your hands in front of you or behind you because that closes you off from your audience. So nice hands to the side. You can hold your note cards in one hand and then you can use them as you speak. Great to look down at your note cards. That's not an issue. You should use them. That's what they're there for, okay? So again, we talked about postures. We talked about hand gestures, eye contact, especially in these recordings. You are going to look at this lovely camera as if it was your direct audience, right? So you're making eye contact there. You can look down at your notes and then back up at your laptop or your webcam, whatever it is you're recording with. So eye contact will be pretty easy for you guys because you only have to focus on the camera. If you have physical audience members, make sure you rotate eye contact among the people that are there. If you have virtual audience members, then you can certainly just look at the camera. You're not required to have audience members, but just in case if you do in the future, you know where to sort of train your eye contact there. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this demonstrative speech that we're going to be presenting this semester. So a demo speech is a type of informative speaking, and it is a how-to speech. So the goal of this speech is we're going to teach our classmates how to complete a process, an activity, a skill. So it is a how-to speech, so how to insert here whatever you want to do. Here are some of the parameters of this assignment to help you think about topic choice. It's five to seven minutes, so you need to have something that will fill up enough time. You do have to have a visual aid. You will not actually complete the process in front of your audience or as you're recording. The goal is to describe it and tell us about it you are being graded on your ability to talk through the process, okay? So for example, sometimes students wanna do things like how to change the oil in a car. Fine, but you're not going to be changing the oil in the car on camera, right? You are going to talk us through the process. So make sure whatever you choose, it's something that you can talk through. You are gonna have visual aids Depending on your technology, you can have physical visual aids or you might be able to have something like I have up here, a screen. Either of those is fine, but just kind of plan for that. Okay, so I've given you some examples of types of things I typically see for this assignment. So the first would be something like how to play a sport, how to play baseball is an example here. That would be an easy thing to demonstrate. Now, that's a 
can be a very, even though it sounds like a simple topic, it's not. A sport is quite complex. So you could talk about kind of either just the basics or something like how to hit a baseball. That might be a better topic to narrow it down. And then you can really just focus on that. How to organize a party, again, another example there. Um, also think about stuff that maybe doesn't have, like it wouldn't be your typical how-to. So I've seen students do really cool things like how to have a happy life. And you could sort of talk us about maybe three different things one would do in order to have a happy life. So anything you can put how-to in front of is an option. Um, just make sure it is class appropriate for sure. Um, you can fit it in that five to seven minutes and you will have some sort of visual aid. So when we think about our topic, we're going to talk a little bit about how we're going to organize those main points. So we're going to take your topic and we're going to divide it into three or four basic steps. So for example, how to have a happy life. I would choose three different things that one would do in order to have a happy life. And those are called our main points. When we're organizing main points, we really have two different options. Either we can talk about them in chronological order, so that would be sequence order. So for example, if I was going to do how to bake a cake, I might start with main point one. The first thing I knew you to do is gather the ingredients and the materials, right? Maybe the second thing I need to do is mix all the ingredients and materials. And then the third thing would be to bake the cake and maybe frost it. So that would be using time or sequence order because they have to be done in those steps. If you have something that doesn't have to be done in a step-by-step -step process, you'd use topical order where you just take a larger topic and divide it into three subtopics. How to have a happy life would be a great example for this one, right? So maybe you're going to choose three things one would do to have a happy life. Maybe it is something like make sure you stay connected to your friends and family. Um, maybe you, oh, I don't know, try new things and then a third one, okay? So those would just be different topics. So they would be main points one, two, and three, but it doesn't matter what order you put them in. So that would be how to take that larger topic and divide it down. This is important because we're going to talk about in our next video how to write your outline and this is where we'll start to place these in our outline format. Okay, and just again we're going to see some examples here. So if I was going to persuade students to buy used textbooks, I might come up with topical order here, right? Because I could come up with three different reasons that students should buy used textbooks. So that might be an organizational pattern I would use. If I was going to give an informative presentation about Nash's campus, again, I would probably use topical order and divide those into three different sections. I'm giving an inform informative presentation about different classes available to students interested in COM. Maybe I would do sequence order here. So I'd have them start with COM 110, then move to COM 120, and then move to COM 231. They sort of build on each other, so that would be a great sequence order there. Excellent. And then persuade students about a parking issue on campus that needs to be addressed. Again, topical, topical here would probably be best, so three reasons why I would need to address that parking issue. So today we've talked a little bit about delivery, so looking at vocal delivery and physical delivery. We've gone over some different topic options for your demonstrative speech, and we've started to look at how we take that topic and divide it down into main points. Again, our next video will go over how we take those main points and start to build our outline, which we will then speak from. So we'll have lots more detail coming up in that video.